following Jesus means following him through death to life again. God raised Jesus from the dead, and now he would commission the, the disciples to go and likewise teach and make disciples, even baptizing them into his same death and resurrection. Jesus hasn't left his followers without a task. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. After John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me and I'll make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boats mending the nets. And immediately he called to them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. There's some good memories I have fishing with my dad. Not the part about getting the fish hook caught in my leg, that wasn't fun, but he was an avid fisherman and was even a member of a fishing club that would take trips throughout the Great Lakes, spending hours on the water. I always got seasick, but it was still kind of fun. They would see what they could catch. I remember vividly one moment in particularly, when my dad and I were preparing to go on a little fishing trip. But before we left on the trip, we had to get all of our fishing tackle ready, our poles and coolers filled with ice and the bait. And my dad taught me that maybe the most important thing about fishing is that you have to have the right bait. So instead of going down to Walmart or the gas station to buy some night crawlers in a styrofoam container, my dad decided to soak our entire front yard with a sprinkler all day long. And then we went out to gather worms ourselves that evening that surfaced. Now at the time, I don't think I appreciated the work that went into this. Um, they were kind of gross, but I learned to look past their offensiveness, the sliminess, and consider their good purpose at fishing. In my mind, these night crawlers were going to be the best bait that anybody ever had. So, the connection between gathering worms in the mud and our gospel lesson today is that you've got to have the right bait. Jesus said to his first, to his first disciples, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And both the irony and the beauty in what Jesus says is that he says it to professional fishermen. And he speaks to them on their own terms. Peter and Andrew, they might have wondered at that moment what exactly it meant to fish for people of the world instead of fish in the Sea of Galilee. They came and followed Jesus according to his will to find out what this might mean. Jesus, God's own son, said these things to humble fishermen. And I suppose that he could have spoken with eloquent language and with pop and pomp and circumstance playing in the background, but instead he commanded them, follow him, follow me, he said, and so they did. Jesus said that he himself would make them fishers of men, and so he would. So you have to have the right bait. And as the events unfold after Jesus calls his first disciples, they just go where he's leading them. Sometimes it makes sense where they're going, and at other times... They're completely confused as to why they're following Jesus to a particular place and finding themselves in rather strange moments with people they least expected to be with. Why do you want to go back to Jerusalem, Jesus? They wanted to kill you. Why are you with these people, Jesus? There's not much hope for them. Everybody else avoids. Notice, though, that it's not the disciples' responsibility to do the fishing for the people yet. They are following being led all the way by Jesus. And Jesus takes the lead, goes on from the Sea of Galilee, where he called those first four, and he began teaching others about himself. And he preached the gospel, which is good news, that in him all of God's promises are answered, fulfilled for forgiveness and salvation. Jesus also healed many people to show that he indeed is who he says he is, and that if he most certainly heals a paralyzed man and a person possessed by a demon or crippled by epilepsy, then he most certainly can and will forgive the sins of those people too. 
In the midst of all of his preaching and teaching and healing, the disciples grew in number. Four became twelve, and they all followed Jesus. They were connected to him and what he said and what he did. Following Jesus was not always a glorious or amazing thing, but it was profound. Jesus, who says, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men, led his disciples to witness moments in which he was ridiculed even and mocked by the Jewish scribes and Pharisees of the day who would eventually have Jesus killed because he said he is the Son of God, the Messiah. Jesus led the disciples to witness even his own death on the cross. This is where following Jesus had landed them, fishers of men. I'm sure it was the farthest thought from the disciples' minds at the time of Jesus' death. How can this be? How can Jesus, of all people who called us to follow him, have led us here? How is it that he now dies? How is it that he is buried? How is it that so many mourn his death while others celebrate it? How does this make them fishers of men? Well, we know three days after his death and burial, and they in time found out too, that Jesus lives again. Following Jesus means following him through death to life again. God raised Jesus from the dead, and now he would commission the disciples to go and likewise teach and make disciples, even baptizing them into his same death and resurrection. Jesus hasn't left his followers without a task. To that point, he was showing them where it was that he had been leading them all along. Following Jesus and no one else must lead to the cross and resurrection. There are a number of other creative things that one might do along the way to fish for men, but you have to have the right bait. Now, that's not bait and switch like a bad thing. But if the bait, if what you say, if what you do is not relating to Christ crucified, then we are fishing in vain and are lost in the imagination of our own pride. Disciples, then, would be drawn to the wrong Jesus if he is not the crucified and risen Savior we behold from the Scriptures. Jesus is no mere teacher of good philosophy only. He's not just a rabbi of a la carte religion, nor is he the shaman healer from Nazareth. He is not on a quest to make you feel good. He is on a quest to heal your mind, body, soul, all of you, and restore to you the joy of salvation, which he intended for you from the foundations of the earth, a healing which ultimately takes place after your death and at your resurrection. Fishing for men is nothing else than connecting people with Jesus, who is cross-bound and resurrection-focused. And all of this is the message which followers of Jesus must fish with, until they received the ultimate command to go into all the world and make disciples. Jesus' followers still relied on what it was Jesus was saying and doing. It was only after he had done and said all, all these things and ascended into heaven that they received their next marching orders to go from there and let everyone know who Jesus is and what it is he has accomplished for them on the cross and through his resurrection, that he has now sent his Holy Spirit to keep joined with Jesus, all who are his and all who hear his word. Having the right bait to go to fishing for men, it means having something to say versus having to say something. It's not all about how creative or cute you can be, but about what it is you have to say. When it comes to successfully and effectively doing mission and ministry in God's kingdom, our primary goal is to connect people to Jesus. Connecting them to the Savior who leads us all to his own death and resurrection from the dead. All of it done as an atoning sacrifice for all people. All along and even still, Jesus is the one 
who must be the focus of our reaching out. Jesus is the one who still makes us to be fishers of men. It is not we ourselves who catch people by personality, precociousness, persistence even, but Christ alone. If it were up to us solely, we would have ruined it all long ago. <clears throat> this fishing happens in our daily lives and through our own unique positions in the world and our relationships to others, starting at home and rippling out from there. To be caught by Christ and gathered into his church happens by hearing of his crucifixion love for all people. It happens by his power alone for which we are thankful. Thankful that he rescued us from our eternal death, from our sinful state. Thankful that he sought us out and calls us his own for all time. Thankful that he enables us to tell others of his saving grace. And so finally, let us pray. Lord Jesus, forgive us where we've strayed from your leading. Make us to know your way that leads to the cross and yet through death to new life. Use us as instruments in your hands to help connect those to you who do not yet believe that you are Lord and God of us all. Amen.